Alright, this is Need for Speed Porsche Unleashed for the PC. This is definitely one of the lesser known Need for Speed games, so, well, let's check it out. Alright, as if you couldn't tell by the name, this game is strictly Porsche. Basically, what they did is they put all their popular models dating back from the 1950s to the year this game came out, which was 2000. And they put all, all the uh, popular Porsche models in there. You can play through a chronological order, which I like to do is what you do is you start in the 50s and you go through those races and then you go in through the 60s and 70s and then finally you get into the modern definitely this game is awesome if you're a huge fan of Porsches because you'll see you know all the the models you can you can look at the cars like you never could in a Need for Speed game like look at this you can look in the interior you can open the bonnet or the hood you know check out the engine and uh, you know it's really really just a showing off of all the all the Porsche models throughout the years the menu system is not the most intuitive thing to figure out there's a lot of weird things like when you buy a new car you're not automatically put in that car and uh, you know when you buy new parts they're not installed and you know stuff's maybe not a hundred percent clear as to what order you're going through in the game but um, you get used to it you have to figure the menu system out. This is one of the Three, first games two, I remember one, to have a go. cockpit view, you know, where you actually see the steering wheel. It's a full 3D interior. You know, the steering wheel's even 3D. You know, they've done this before and obviously test drive games and stuff like that with, you know, two dimensional interiors. Uh, but, you know, having the full 3D interior with, uh, you know, your guy's hand on the steering wheel and he, and he shifts, it really was a cool. Uh, concept and it added a lot of realism to this game. You know, this is one of my favorite Need for Speed games. It's a really good blend of uh, simulation and arcade, and uh, really gives it a realistic feel with these interiors that they put in it. So here we're starting off in like a 1950s or 1960s Porsche, and you know, like I said, if you're a fan of Porsches, you are gonna love this game. But if you're a fan of racing games, you're gonna like this game too. And you may think the old cars are, uh, you know, really slow at first, but they actually slide around a lot. And uh, they can be a little bit fun to drive. I mean, it really makes you feel like you're, uh, you know, saving the slide. I mean, the graphics look a little bit dated now, that's for sure. This game, like I mentioned, came out in 2000. And uh, that's one reason I think you've maybe not heard of it before. Is, uh, you know, it kind of came out late in the PlayStation's life. Uh, obviously the PlayStation 2 was you know just around the corner and you know most racing fans uh, were looking forward to Gran Turismo 3 coming out with the PlayStation 2 this was only released for the PC and the PlayStation and this game was developed by EA Canada on the PC and then later ported to the PlayStation I don't like the music in this game you know it has this sort of upbeat techno music throughout the whole game which is fine, I, w I wouldn't mind that if you know, you're know you in the single race mode or the multiplayer mode or even in the, in the, uh, in the history mode if you're in the evolution mode in the, in the later times. I will give the PlayStation credit for the music because what they did is they matched the music for the area you're in. So when you're in the 50s, 60s you have that sort of music and then you move from the 70s to the 80s and you get 80s kind of music and then as you move into the 90s you get the 90s kind of music so the music changes as you go through the eras which is makes much more sense the music in this one when you're in a 1950s car and you're you know you're supposed to be racing in the 50s and it has this modern techno music it just doesn't really work as you start to move up through the cars you'll find the difficulty does get harder especially as you move into the 911s and uh, they'll start to oversteer they're a little bit uh, twitchier on the edge uh, from some of the earlier cars they're also faster, so you'll find yourself going faster. The opponents, as you get further through the game, also get harder. 
course, as the game gets harder and you start to change cars, you're going to realize that you have to soup up the cars. And this is one of the first Need for Speed games that I remember to have the ability to modify your car. And all the previous Need for Speed 1, 2, and 3, I mean, you got the car and that's what it was. In here, you can buy engine parts, you can buy suspension parts, uh, you can buy brake parts. Uh, transmission parts, you can you know get a, a high speed transmission or a close ratio transmission to accelerate faster, uh, you can buy tires, and not only do you have to buy the parts, of course, don't forget you have to put them on your car. And once you go into the car settings, you can start to, um, you can actually adjust a lot of the settings, you can adjust, you know, brake balance and, and the, uh, the, st the stiffness of the springs and a lot of stuff you, you'd expect in a, a racing game, but you never got in a Need for Speed game really until now. And here's where you install all the parts that you bought. So not only do you have to buy the parts, you have to make sure that you do install them. With the new parts installed, well you can definitely notice the difference. I'm having no troubles now keeping up in this race with the uh, early 911 model here. The cars do take damage, and the damage does show. It also affects uh, handling, braking, and uh, you can also do repairs to the car. So you get money for every race, obviously, to buy new cars as you go through the history. You have to buy newer cars as you go along, and then, of course, you have to repair and modify those cars in some cases to keep up in the races. And here we found a little shortcut. Uh, a lot of the tracks, similar to the earlier Need for Speed games, have one or two shortcuts in the track. And here as we go through time, we see Three, that we'll end up two, uh, into, the, one, into the 90s. And now we have the Porsche Boxster. Uh, and of course, coming from those older cars to the Boxster, now we have some proper handling and you'll really feel the turn in on this car. This car is a lot more precise than the uh, the older 911s we were driving earlier and uh, you know you won't spin out as easily in this one either. and ultimately you'll work your way to the modern 911 turbos. Uh, there's a lot of other cars in this game. There's, you know, some of Porsche's um, Le Mans style racing cars. And there's cars that you have to unlock as you go. Overall, this is an awesome game if you like Need for Speed games, especially the older Need for Speed games. And this one really brings the simulation up a notch. The 3D interior really gives it a realistic feel. Um, you know, obviously if you're a Porsche fan, you're going to love this game because it's full of Porsche history. Um, but you know, if you're a huge Need for Speed fan, you should definitely pick this one up. I recommend you pick this one up for the PC. As I said, the PlayStation game is a little bit dated. It's in that era where the PlayStation wasn't really keeping up with this kind of stuff. And the graphics are much slower on the PlayStation.